Welcome back, it's me Lou, and I'm here for another action figure review, but today's review is going to be a custom action figure, and it's this guy on the far right. It's my custom G.I. Joe Classified Scrap Iron Action Figure. Growing up in the 80s, one of my favorite G.I. Joe characters uh, was this guy right here. Um, I believe this is my childhood Scrap Iron Action Figure. Uh, it's seen better days. It's, def it's definitely kind of beat up. Um, like if you look here, his visor is kind of colored in black with a Sharpie just because over time a lot of the paint got chipped off. Um, I love this guy for so many reasons growing up. I think he had a really cool looking costume. Um, there was a certain anonymity about him since he had this helmet on and it covered up half of his face. I really dug his uniform. Um, yeah, everything about this guy was awesome. He looked a lot different than the standard Cobra Trooper. I believe he was Cobra's anti-armor specialist. And he came with this um, little kind of like missile pod kind of deal that shot out two missiles. Um, I mean, as a play feature, the missiles didn't actually shoot out. But it was kind of like a, this tripod with, with this kind of like missile launcher attached on top of it. And then he had kind of like a remote control that was wired to it. And for me, I thought that was such a cool... F I don't know, it's such a cool idea, and the figure just looked really awesome. Um, there were so many things about this character I liked. He had this cool helmet, and then he had he had the Cobra symbol um, embossed on the top of the helmet. As I mentioned earlier, he had this visor that covered up half of his face. And all you ever saw was just the, the bottom half of his mouth. And he kind of had this, I don't know, this weird like overall jumper kind of looking deal. It looked like he might have had like some sort of jumpsuit underneath this, underneath this vest. He had some grenades, pockets, um, knee pads, a pistol. Uh, I don't know. There was something about this guy that looked really cool. Uh, I think as a kid, he almost looked like he could serve like multi-purposes. Like with a helmet, you know, it was easy to envision him as maybe being like a pilot or a driver. Um, with the vest, it looked like he was a little bit more suited up. So maybe he could go in for some like... Uh, I don't know, heavy fire action, and uh, I don't know, he was just really cool, and I, I, I just remember liking this guy so much as a kid growing up, and even in instances where I'd uh, kind of like mix action figures across the board, like, you know, maybe mix G.I. Joe with Star Wars or vice versa, I kind of remember this, using this guy in like multiple play scenarios besides this G.I. Joe, just because he had a certain look about him. Yeah, so this was definitely one of my favorite G.I. Joes as a kid. Love this guy a lot. And on the left here, we kind of have one of the reissued versions of this figure. This figure came out, I believe, um, maybe early early 2000s or late 2000s. And this was um, the comic book version of Scrap Iron. And I think this came in the G.I. Joe Hasbro comic book 2 packs. So his color scheme is a lot brighter, um, you know, it's more comic book inspired, that's why he had these like lighter blues and these bright reds, and there's more detail colored also, uh, because the painting technology in the 2000s was a lot better than it was in the 1980s. So in the 1980s, you know, it, it was kind of a treat if you got something as detailed as like maybe the insignia, uh, I'm not sure if that was like tampoed on or if that was painted on. But in the 2000s, you know, he could get really finer details, like uh, the buckles on his straps are painted silver. There's actually more paint applications, so instead of just like one or two colors, he has uh, like the, the light blue on the visor, he has the red on the helmet, he has the silver, he has the black. So this overall, this was a really cool figure. The flesh tone was a lot better than um, the flesh tone on the older figure. And I, I want to say, I think the head's actually a re-sculpt also. Uh, the proportions are a little bit better. The head looks a little bit smaller to fit this body better. And this was, this is, I don't know, this is, I still think this is a great action figure. So when Hasbro blessed us with the G.I. Joe Classified series, uh, one character I'm hoping they give us in the near future is Scrap Iron. And like my other custom G.I. Joes, this was a case of me just being really antsy and wanting my own version of the figure. So this past weekend, uh, I took it upon myself to just make a custom scrap iron. And it's not one for one perfect, but for me, it's just a nice placeholder. 
Uh, eventually, what I plan to do is make a custom package for this guy and um, put him in the custom package and hang him on the wall with the rest of my G.I. Joe Classified series. But this weekend, I kind of ran out of time, and I'm not sure if I'll get around to doing a, a custom box for this guy anytime soon. So at the very least, I thought it'd be fun to at least, you know, at least get the figure on a video just so I could show it off. And, you know, if you're a customizer like me or if you want to, like, if you're, in, you know, you really want a scrap iron of your own, maybe this could give you some ideas. So, yeah, this is my custom uh, G.I. Joe classified scrap iron figure. And I tried to carry over as many of the original traits that this one had onto this newer figure. Um, I kind of felt that this figure um, was, I kind of wanted to keep it true to the original figure, but I also wanted it, to f wanted it to feel more like a modern revisioning of the character, like how he'd look in uh, the 2020s, but, you know, not get overboard or deviate too far from the original character. So, he, you know, one thing that was key here is uh, maintaining the same color scheme. So for this guy, it was all about keeping the reds and the blues um you know like this guy he had this he had a trademark like red vest here and i'm like i need a red vest so you know he had his red vest there's two points of interest on his chest that have black on them there's grenades on one side and a pocket on the other so for this guy i thought to myself all right let's carry over two parts that are colored black so i'll have the pouches here colored black um in instead of grenades and then I'll give him a pistol here. This guy here. Now the helmet was a different story. Because this guy here. The original figure. I believe the helmet was all black. And on the comic book inspired one. Um, they took some liberties. And then they changed the color of the visor. So it was kind of like this sky blue. And then he had a blue helmet. With the red emblem. But for me like scrap iron. It's kind of like. Now as much as I love this figure. I, I really love just the all black helmet. But at the same time, I didn't want to give this guy an all-black helmet because I kind of felt that I'd be, like, masking some details. And I, I just kind of wanted to give it a little bit more fresher look to it. So, um, I went ahead and at least made most of the helmet black, like, where the visor's all black. Uh, he has an open face, so you can see his mouth. And, um, this one has a Cobra Trooper helmet, and I kind of just paint it... On the, on the helmet, there's actually these kind of like scribed in lines over here and over here. And I thought I'd just color in the middle part black. Just so I could give this helmet maybe a ratio of like maybe a 60 to 40% black to color ratio. So it's not entirely black, but it's predominantly black. So I'll at least be able to maintain that color scheme. This dude had black gloves. This guy kind of has like black fingers, which is all right. Now, this is where it got kind of weird. So, the original figure, he had this weird, like, like red trim on, like, the crotch area of his pants. And it just looked really weird. It almost made it look like he was wearing, like, um, briefs over his, over his pants. And, I don't know, I kind of wanted to... Part of me kind of felt like maybe I could figure out a way to do that. But, I couldn't really... I don't know. I couldn't really justify to start painting these red lines on his crotch because I thought, you know, in the 2020s, it'd be kind of a weird design aesthetic. So I'm like, you know, what? I'm just gonna leave his pants alone. Uh, this guy has a a holster on his left leg. Now this is where it becomes interesting because uh, this the newer version of the figure, the comic book inspired one, it looks like he has different legs because on the leg here he has a knife. Whereas on the other leg, he doesn't have the holster at all. So, um, you know, I kind of had to like figure out what I wanted to do. And then I, I kind of went, you know what, I'll meet, I'll just meet them halfway. So what I did next was, um, uh, I added a strap on this leg and I added a knife right here. Uh, both versions of the previous scrap irons have black knee pads. So I went ahead and just gave this guy black knee pads. Uh, both versions have completely red boots. I didn't want to give this guy completely red boots because I kind of felt it looked too too bright and too loud. So at the very least, I decided to at least color the shin guards um, red. And then lastly, I just like top off the figure with little bits of silver just to bring out some of the little details like the rivets and the buckles. 
And there was silver used on this one. And I thought the silver was a nice touch. It kind of brings out the details more. Whereas on this guy, you know, his buckles are just kind of left, you know, red. And I don't know. I just wanted more detail on them. So let's put these aside. And let's take a closer look up at my custom scrap iron. So here he is. Um, he's not perfect by any means. But for me, at least, he's a good placeholder. Now, in terms of uh, how I came to make this guy, uh, I could talk about that right now. So the base body of this figure is actually um, this this right here. This is the G.I. Joe um, Cobra Infantry, which was the second release of the original Cobra Island Cobra Trooper, I think. I might be getting them backwards, but I believe this is the infantry figure. Um, so... Uh, when I saw this figure initially, I thought, man, this would be such a great base to use for a custom. Uh, you know, you, once you remove the helmet, the uniform is kind of very generic. He has a, a tactical vest, you know, with very, with very simple basic utilities like a knife and a pistol. Lots of pockets, lots of harnesses, lots of belts and straps. Uh, in terms of the figure's body, he has key armor pieces where, you know, you'd expect it on a figure like this. Like the forearms, the knees, and the the boots so I was looking at this I'm like you know what this would be a great base to create a scrap iron and my initial thought um, was that I was just gonna keep the figure as is and just repaint the vest but then I felt that was kind of a cop-out I'm like the vest it's all I mean, as much as I like this vest I think it's cool uh, I didn't want this to be a simple straight-up repaint I want to invest more time into it just so I could create something that looked a little bit more authentic like this guy so what I did was, um, I took this figure, of course I, I, I took off the head, I even removed the neck. So, uh, so the neck here, I replaced it with, I had a flesh toned neck, and this was off a of G.I. Joe classified gung-ho. I had a spare gung-ho figure, so I took the neck off. And the neck was too, it was actually too long, and it was even too thick. But I didn't mind the thickness so much, it was the length that bothered me. So I had to trim the neck down and then um, plop it into the socket. But before I plopped it into the socket, there's actually a ball joint. And I snipped that off, uh, applied some, I think it was Gorilla Brand um, Super Glue is the gel kind. And I just plopped it in there and stuck the head on. And for the scrap iron mask, for the helmeted head, um, I did I I couldn't find a spare head. I had my bin of like Marvel Legends heads and this I just have like a bin at like about like maybe like this big and like this deep. And it's just filled with dozens of um custom not custom, it's just filled with a bunch of Marvel Legends heads and heads from other brands. And I use those from some of my G.I. Joe customs. So I was kinda digging through there, I'm like, what could I use for a scrap iron head? And then I came across this. Uh, this is the Marvel Legends, I think it's the Hydra Trooper. Uh, I believe I got this in a two-pack with the Red Skull, I think. And there are two versions of it. There's this one um, with the open face, so you can see the mouth, and he has the red eyes. And then there was another mask. I'm not sure if, it is, if this was a different fig from a different figure, but... Um, I mean, it's the, same, it's the same figure, but it's a different head, but I still don't remember if it was from the two-pack. So this is another um, Hydra Trooper, but this one has more detail, has the black eyes. It's more like goggles, whereas this one, the goggles are recessed into the helmet. And this is a closed face helmet, and it kind of has the rebreather apparatus in the front. And then there's these stripes that are kind of painted along the top of the helmet. So I found these in there, and I'm like, wow, these would kind of make cool looking, you know, helmets for my like, scrap iron, especially this guy right here. So this one, I'm like, um, I could kind of do with this, or do away with this one, because I think initially I was gonna cut the mouthpiece off here, and then kind of Frankenstein another face, like the bottom half of the face from another figure, and create this look. But this look kind of already had the open mouth and the helmet. So um, uh, once I had the helmet, I was looking at it. I'm like, okay, this could kind of work. So then I put the figure, the helmet on here. Um, this one might be a little bit snug. I don't want to put it in all the way because I might not be able to get it out. 
So then I put the helmet on here and it was kind of getting there. Um, I, for some reason, I was contemplating keeping the, the red lenses on the goggles because I thought it added a little bit more character to it. But then I, I'm like, nah, I don't want to compromise. Let's just paint the goggles completely black. And I was about to fill in the recessed lenses, but at the same time, I thought it was, it was a cool kind of like modern detail to the that visor deal. But the helmet seemed kind of like empty at the top because if you look here, his helmet gets really big near the ears because it's almost like muff. He almost has like earmuffs on the side. And I didn't, I couldn't figure out a way I'd, I wanted to do that where it wouldn't look ridiculous because initially I was gonna like like either sculpt or figure out a way to like attach something on the sides of his helmet to look like earmuffs but every time i kind of like thought about it i'm like it it looked like those weird hair buns on princess leia so i'm like okay maybe that's not gonna work but i remember the cobra trooper here um he has this helmet and i'm like this helmet's actually a really cool shape so let's see if i could place it on top of the figure so then i kind of placed it on the figure's head and this is a very pliable plastic that kind of stretches. So once I got it on there and uh, I just kept on, I think I might have heated it up just a little bit just to soften it even more. But I was able to press it in all the way and then I got this. And for me, it's like, it's not bad. It kind of works. Um, so I just took this helmet and squished it onto this head. And it kind of gave me a modern revisionist look of what Scrap Iron's helmet might look like in the 2020s. But there were there was certain key uh, elements of this helmet I really liked. Like I really love the Cobra emblem on the top of the helmet. So I'm like, I got to carry that over at the very least. Initially, what I was going to do was um, print out a water slide decal and place that water slide uh, decal sticker on the front of the helmet. But the helmet, it's kind of small, and I didn't want to waste an entire water decal sheet just to print out a tiny Cobra emblem. But I remember that when I took this vest off of this figure, that there was a Cobra emblem on one of the straps. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to salvage this little emblem here, and I'm going to glue it to the front of this helmet. And I did. So it gave me the little Cobra emblem, and at the same time, it kind of gave the helmet a little bit more surf surface detail. Which I think it kind of needed. And on the side of the helmet, um, whoops, on the side of the helmet over here, I'm like, I don't want to keep it uh, too plain. I still kind of want to add a little bit more to it. So somewhere on this vest, I don't remember where, I trimmed off some pieces of plastic and I glued them onto the sides of the helmet here and here so those greeble pieces just add a little bit more detail and dimension to the helmet so it's not completely like flat surfaced like this one so the helmet was done and out of the way and then i was staring at the figure without the helmet or i mean without the head at all and i was kind of thinking to myself what does scrap iron look like without the helmet so i don't recall them ever showing his face in the cartoon nor in the comic books. Um, if they have revealed Scrap Iron's face in the comic books, please let me know because I'd, I'd like to see that. But one image came up online, and let me grab that real quick. So in the G.I. Joe animated series, uh, G.I. Joe Renegades, they actually had a version of Scrap Iron without the helmet. And Scrap Iron without the helmet looked like this. So I, it's been a while, so I don't really recall um the episode or his appearance in renegades but uh, i think in, in renegades he was a scientist and for some reason his face was all kind of marred and scarred up on one side and i'm like wow that'd be really cool if i can incorporate the unmasked version of scrap iron into my gi joe custom so i went digging into that little bin i have of like extra heads and i came across this and it's the frank grillo um crossbones head from the marvel cinematic universe and this marvel legends head i was looking at it, i'm like you know what this is almost perfect he has a similar haircut to this guy sans you know this guy's a little bit more hair whereas his sides are kind of shaved but he kind of has that similar hairstyle and then his face is really scarred and beat up so i was thinking to myself you know what this would be a great 
uh, unmasked helmet, unmasked, unhelmeted head for my scrap iron. And I thought it'd just be a fun, cool little, like, you know, Easter egg. Like, you know, if you want to see what scrap iron looks like without his helmet, it's like, you know, there we go. It's scrap iron without his helmet. And I think it's a badass look for him. It makes him look grizzled. It makes him look tough. Um, he's the anti-armor specialist, so you could kind of tell he's seen his fair deal of, like, firefights and, like, heavy exchange, you know, this, and, you know, there's a story to be told here, um, you know, maybe at one time he was a Cobra Trooper, and then he got his face, like, burned off in, like, some massive explosion, and that explains why he wears this super-duper armored helmet, and then it's, it, I was looking at this, and I'm like, this is such a cool look. And I don't know, I just liked it a lot, and I'm like, I'm going to go with it. So my custom scrap iron has two helm has two heads. He has the helmeted head and then the unmasked version, which I think is a fun detail. So one of the other things that this guy needed um, was the vest. The vest here is, like I think, one of the really defining characteristics of scrap iron. Like, there's been previous iterations of the character in the toy line, um, but... They never feel like the original scrap iron. Um, I've seen some scrap iron figures where he almost looks like a generic Cobra Trooper, but a little bit more souped up. Like I've seen one where I, th I think he's like maybe like gray or silver, and maybe he has like a gray or silver helmet. But I think, I think with like a red visor, and he carries on like a big gun. But it it looks like a cool toy, but it doesn't feel like scrap iron. So for me, scrap iron, it's all about, you know, maintaining these specific details like the vest and the helmet and having his face exposed at the bottom. So I needed a vest. So the vest, I, I originally, as I stated earlier, I was going to use the trooper's vest, but paint it red. But I felt that was going to be kind of lazy. And I'm like, you know what? It's a, it's a lazy custom. Let's put a little bit more work into this. And then I remember that I had a spare vest, but it wasn't a Hasbro branded vest. This was a Mattel vest. And it's this vest right here. So this is a Mattel vest from their WWE line of toys. And more specifically, this vest is taken from the WWE Create a Superstar line. Um, it was a toy line that came out maybe four or five years ago. And the concept of that toy line was simple. Um, you take standard WWE superstars like Roman Reigns or John Cena or Randy Orton and then you take their nickname like and use their nickname to kind of create an alternate uh, personality or an alternate figure if you will of that character so in addition to like just getting a normal Randy Orton figure you know Randy Orton's known as the Viper he'd come with these additional pieces so he could kind of create like a Viper inspired action figure um, another example is like Seamus. Seamus is known as the Celtic Warrior. And then his action figure came with additional pieces that you could like sw swap on or add on. And you'd create this um, Celtic Warrior inspired action figure. Um, but in addition to just doing those figures, Mattel was kind of, kind of cool and they actually produced these uh, action figure accessory packs. And I think there were three of them. If I remember correctly, there was, uh, let me think about this real quick. There was the Knight Accessory Pack, which included gladiatorial armor. There was like a referee pack that came with like with a referee's vest and like a Money in the Bank briefcase. And I think like a, like a, a ring bell. And then there was the, the Vigilante Pack. That's what it was called. There was the Vigilante Pack, which came with a, a helmet, a visor, a, a baton and it came with this like tactical riot vest kind of deal and then I remember I had this in my parts bin I'm like this would be perfect for scrap iron <clears throat> um excuse me and so I grabbed this vest and then I put it on the figure but the thing is <coughs> excuse me again uh, the vest here it's it, it's just too large uh, the vest is even too large for a WWE figure. Uh, once I put it on the body of this character, let me show you real quick. Let me take this off. Alright, so a, a cool bonus with this using this guy as the base is that 
he has a really cool body underneath this tactical armor. Um, there's no way to get this thing off, um, to be honest. So what I had to do was I took a, an X-Acto knife and I cut a, a clean line right down the middle in order to remove the vest. And if you're wondering what I did with the vest, um, I'm using it for another custom and I'll show that off sometime in the future. But, um, so yeah, I took the vest off and then you're left with this really cool, like, base body. I think this is an awesome base body. And it, I mean, even though it has this Cobra emblem um, sculpted into the chest, I think it, it'd be a really cool, just like generic base body to use on like anything, whether it's a Marvel Legends or another G.I. Joe classified figure. So in addition to being able to take off the vest, I, you know, I kind of like this look for Scrap Iron also. It's like his, this is almost like his casual look. Like if he's just hanging out the barracks or the headquarters, you know, or hang out in the Terror Dome without his body armor. If he's just chilling like in the dining hall or whatever it is, you know, he this is what he looks like on his days off. You know, he's he doesn't wear all the heavy armor, but he's still kind of like dressed up in case he has to go. So this is a great base body, but going back to the vest, um, this G this Mattel Create a Superstar vest, it's just too large for the figure. Um, as I stated earlier, it's even too large for some of the, the WWE figures. So he kind of like once you put the vest on him, he just kind of swims around in here. It, there's there's too many. Even if he strapped it in all the way, it's really gappy on the top. It's too long, and it's it just doesn't work. But I was so married to the idea of wanting to use this vest on this figure, so I went ahead and. I kind of pretended I was like an, um, a seamstress, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just pretend I'm a seamstress, and let's just alter the hell out of this vest and make it work. So then uh, um, I, I took this vest, and I examined it closely, and I thought to myself, okay, it's too long. What could I lose? So I thought to myself, is okay, for one, I could cut the vest off um, at certain areas at the straps and shorten the straps. I could lose this belt to get to shorten it even further, and I could sh remove the belt here. And then I'm like, the you know, it's too baggy on them, it's too big. So let's kind of like thin it down even further. Let's cut off some excess plastic here and here. Uh, so that's what I did. I took this vest, and then I, I believe I cut um, part of the, I cut off the straps here and here. And I, I want to say I'm re maybe removed about a quarter of an inch on both sides of the straps. And I re-glued it to the vest again. And I used uh, Gorilla Super Glue, the gel kind. And I glued it here and here. So I made the straps a lot shorter. So if you look on the side, you can see how much, how much smaller I made the vest. It's crazy. So here's the original vest and then here's the newer one. You can see that I shortened the straps. And then once I removed the belt, it kind of shortened the height of the vest also. And then I cut off most of the plastic from here up until the buckles. And then the straps, I trimmed the hell out of the straps. And then I just glued the pieces together. So the way the vest goes onto the figure is um, I, I got rid of the whole functional straps here just just because every time um i'd move the figure's arms these things would just like stretch in and out and the vest would kind of like break apart so i'm like i need to keep it permanent so i glued the two halves together so i glued the, the two halves together like this and i just cut as clean as cleanly as i could a straight line down the middle of the vest but the line um after it got painted it kind of the plastic, I don't know, it might have warped a little from all the times I had this under a hair dryer trying to dry the paint. So the line, you know, it doesn't look as straight as I'd like, but at least it's a clean cut. So if I want to put this vest back on this guy, you know, it's very simple. I just kind of thread his arms into it. And then there we go. And the cut in the back doesn't bother me that much because like I said before, I plan to have this figure um, reboxed and displaying it mint on card. And in terms of like photography and video, if I do take video or photos of this guy, you're not going to see the back. 
So the vest, it's I don't want to say it's too big because it's a it's a decent fit, but the plastic it's it's so thick that it makes it look a little bit wider than it should. But for me, it's it's tolerable. Um, it's a stand-in figure until I get an official scrap iron figure. And uh, what other details did I add? So the, this detail, I didn't want to keep it completely stock. I wanted to add more detail to it. So on the spare vest that I had after I moved it from this figure is I cut off the holster from the back and I glued it to the front. So at least it'd give them some, another weapon on here. I took the, the knife, the knife sheath from the strap up here. I cut that off and then I made a makeshift strap and glued the strap on the leg and attached the knife on this leg. So the fi I mean the figure wouldn't look as stock as it looked previously. And that's pretty much it. You know, all the details were in place and I got my custom scrap iron figure. So Yeah, very happy with it. Uh it's not perfect by any means, but for now it's going to be a a placeholder and it'll look that much better once I make a package for it. So yeah, I'm kind of stoked. I get to add another Cobra character to my ranks, and I think it's I think it's all right. Um, I could have gotten a little bit more crazy with the paint details, but I kind of wanted to keep the paint details to a minimum. I didn't want to go too overboard because then it wouldn't fit in with the rest of this line. Like with these fi with these figures, they don't go to the extra details of like painting in the the rivets or the buckles or the eyelets. So for this one, I'm like, you know, this kind of keep the level of paint detail similar to this and not to go too crazy. So yeah, this is my custom scrap iron figure. And let's wrap this up because this video is running way too long. I didn't think it'd go this long. Um, so if you want a custom scrap iron figure of your own, I hope I gave you some fun ideas. Um, I'm sure we'll get scrap iron in the G.I. Joe Classified series in the near future. If I would, if I had to guess, I'd guess probably sometime next year in 2022. Um, he's a very popular character. It seems like every time they do a new G.I. Joe series or line, there's always a scrap iron character somewhere in there. And the original character, I think he holds a, a special place in, in the hearts of many fans. So I, I don't think they're overlooking this guy. I think we'll see him hopefully soon. Oh, that was a lot said. So, um, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. As I've stated many times before, um, custom action figures, it's a fun, fun hobby. If you haven't taken upon yourself to make a custom action figure, I strongly suggest you try it out. If there's a character that you love that's like in a comic book, video game, movie, or TV show, or just anything in general... And if they don't make that an action figure of it, you know, just take it upon yourself and, you know, make one for yourself. Uh, it's a fun learning process, but it's a very rewarding hobby in the end. So once again, my name is Lou. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And I will talk to you again soon. Take care.